Thus far, we've been talking about pendula, but nonlinear oscillators have a really rich history. One of the most famous from the 20th century is something called the Van der Poel oscillator. And where this really comes from is something called the Van der Poel circuit. This is a nonlinear RCL circuit. So you've got a capacitor, you've got an inductor coil, and those are the standard guys, but you've also got a nonlinear resistor that's got some interesting properties. Blah, 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 electrical engineering. Let's make this a little bit simpler. Let's start off with a simple harmonic oscillator. So you've got a variable x, and the second derivative of x with respect to time plus x equals zero, right? That's the simple one. We know that one, it's linear. But now what you do is you add some friction, some nonlinear damping to this equation. The model, the second order differential equation that one gets as a result is the Van der Poel equation. That is the second derivative of x with respect to time plus epsilon times quantity x squared minus one times dx dt plus x equals zero. So what we've done is we've taken that simple harmonic oscillator. We've added a damping term that has some constant epsilon in there. And that damping term is, is interesting because when x is large, then you have lots of damping. It's like lots of friction in this system. But when x is small, that x squared minus one becomes negative. And that means you have negative damping. You have excitation. This is what makes this equation so interesting. All right, so let's do what we do and write this out as a first order system. We're going to let y be equal to dx dt, and then the derivative of the vector x, y is really what? Well, the derivative of x is y. The derivative of y is the second derivative of x, which is minus x minus epsilon times quantity x squared minus one times y. Our next step, of course, solve for the equilibria. Y has to be equal to zero, and what happens when we plug in y equals zero into the second term? Um, the only thing that we have is that x equals zero. Th that's it. The only equilibrium we have is at the origin. Wow, this system is gonna be so easy to work with, just one equilibrium. So let's classify that equilibrium. If we write out the right-hand side of the equation, what do we get for the outputs? We get y and minus x minus epsilon times quantity x squared minus one times y. Now we could take the derivative of this, but look, let's do things a little bit differently. Let's Taylor expand this at the origin and just pull out the obvious linear terms. The linear terms are gonna be what? I have the two by two matrix, zero, one, negative one epsilon times x, y. And then we've got the nonlinear portion of this, which, well, there's not quite enough room for it. I'll leave that to you. But it doesn't matter because the only thing we care about is the derivative at the origin, which is just the coefficients of the linear terms of this polynomial system. This derivative has trace equal to epsilon, which is a positive constant. The determinant is equal to one, which is also positive. And that means we've got a center at the origin. This is going to be just like the nonlinear pendulum we looked at, right? Maybe not, because remember, when you have a center, you've got some additional work to do. And this system, because it has damping, nonlinear damping, it is not a conservative system. Those nonlinear terms that we ignored before actually make a really big difference. So how do we examine this system and figure out what is happening at the origin? Well, there are some analytical approaches to doing so. We'll get to that a little bit later. For now, let's just Take a look, let's run a simulation, pick a nice value of epsilon, not too big, and see what we can see. And what we see is that the origin is in fact a spiral source. Those nonlinear terms contribute to an instability there. This is maybe not surprising since you have that negative damping for small values of x. But because you have positive damping, for large values of x, what does that mean? That means that far out, everything is getting sucked in. You're not running off to infinity. 
So if you're getting pushed away from the origin, you're getting pulled in from infinity, what's happening long term in this system? That is a little bit of a mystery that we are going to get to eventually.